Dribble and Behance used to be my absolute favorite site for design inspiration. But as I've been more and more active in the design space and been an actual designer in the real space, my thoughts and opinions on Dribble and Behance have completely changed and I'll explain why. Now, don't get me wrong, I do think that Dribble is absolutely perfect for a few very, very specific tasks, but that's not the case for most of the people that are gonna be using Dribble and Behance. I'll explain why I think Dribble and Behance aren't the best sites in the world for inspiration in a little bit, but before that, let's take a deeper dive into the best and the absolute worst sites for design inspiration. Now, Dribble is absolutely great for a few very, very specific tasks, like for example, knowing where trends are headed. Like for example, when the crypto and the NFT spaces were absolutely booming, Dribble was having a field day with those designs. I mean, we knew exactly what the status was with that type of design, you know, the purple, the hologrammy, greeny, kind of dark scenario and dark design. And that mostly came from Dribble. All that inspiration, all those trends were directed from Dribble and from these type of of websites. But there's a pretty, pretty big problem here. Now, design as a whole isn't only trends. There's many, many more aspects to design rather than just trends. What are the prettiest colors available today? What are the coolest trends? What are the glass morphism? All these different trends come and go. And design is much more than just these things. Now, at its absolute core, design is problem solving. And there isn't too much problem solving that you can do with a tiny 300 by 400 image or whatever this, this size is. You can't really do too much of that within this little space. And alongside that, you don't actually understand what the problems that these people are trying to solve. And Dribble does give you an option to be able to explain that, to add a lot of text, but that's not the case with most of these designs. Most of these designs are just simply case studies or their mockups or their cool attempts at trying something new and there's nothing wrong with that. But that's not necessarily where you should be getting your design inspiration from. One of the main reasons why you shouldn't use Dribble and Behance for inspiration is that these designs aren't necessarily tried and tested in the real world, in the real market. You don't know what's converting. You don't necessarily understand why this design might be good or why be not. And just because it's on the front page of Dribble or Behance or Pinterest or whatever it is that you're looking, doesn't necessarily mean that this design works for you. And this design will satisfy your client and will reach the KPIs or all the metrics that you want it to reach. It's not necessarily that route that you should be taking. Now, some of the sites that we're gonna feature on later in this video are absolutely tried and tested in the battlefield of the world. And so we're gonna see what actually works, what doesn't and why, but this isn't necessarily the way to go about it. And also sometimes designs in Dribbble aren't even necessarily well designed or well thought out. This is an example right here. And this is even on the front page of the web design section. And what we can see here is that this design doesn't have the proper padding, the proper hierarchy, the proper contrast. And so it's missing a lot of the design standards that we are already very familiar with, but because it's on the front page of Dribble, you're expected to think that this is a great design, it's worthy of your inspiration, and you should take a look at it, you should like it, you should comment, you should do whatever. But again, it's just a mock-up, it's just a simple design. And I must say that this isn't most designs here on Dribble. this is just one of the examples that I saw here. I mean, this is what this is what's on the site, right? I can't defend it if this is what they're, they're showcasing in the front page. Now that we've seen what's wrong with Dribble and Behance and that type of website, let's take a look at some websites that are really great that I recommend for you to actually use as your inspiration for specifically web design in this case. But let's take a look at them and stay until the end of the video to see which website I think is the most complete for absolutely all the cases that you will need. So stay tuned for that. Okay, what you want in an inspiration site or when you're looking for inspirations online, what you need and what you want to find is number one, designs that have been used in real life that actually work and that actually are used by by real companies, real human beings. Number two, designs that have solved real problems. So whether it's a specific metric or a specific user problem or contrast that they had, I'm not sure, but it needs to be real guys. And number three, designs that follow industry standards. If they don't follow basic standards like hierarchy, layout, contrast, color, all that, then I mean, this is it's not even worth your attention. And lastly, something really important to look at is designs that are doing something really innovative. Now, they might not have specifically a corporate site or something like that, but they're doing something cool, it's something innovative, it's something new. Okay, and then maybe in that case, you should be inspired and you should, inspired. You should take a look at the site and you should care that it's a good site and you can, you can use it. So let's take a look at these sites here. Now, I've got a lot of sites to go over, so stay with me. Again, the last ones are gonna be some of the most important here, but the first site that I use almost every single day is Awards. Now, I am an Awards jury member, so I am a bit biased, but Awards has some of the best website design in the world, and they specifically, that's their whole thing, right? They wanna showcase the best web design in the whole world, but if you do want to search by collections or you do wanna search by specific types of websites, whether it's by specific code, maybe you wanna take inspiration for a 404 page, you know? Well, here are some great examples of real websites that actually work. So if we click on the very first one here and I click on this link, we'll see that it takes us to a real site. Do you see how important that is? I mean, this is a real site 
real HTML CSS going on here. It's not just design and publish to dribble. So that's one of the websites, awards.com. Number two is Lapa Ninja. I've featured these guys 30,000 times already, but it's worth repeating. These guys have one of the best collections of different categories of websites. So if you're building a site that's specifically, I don't know, something that involves health and fitness, well, then you click on health and fitness and it'll give you some great examples of real sites. So if I click that link, it'll take me to the real website of this company and we can see what that looks like. Now, I'm not exactly sure what factors makes the people that save these sites onto Lapa Ninja make them actually save them. I'm not exactly sure what, what categories they use or what, what checklists they use. So I'm not too sure on those metrics, but the fact that you can see so many different examples of different categories is a great way for you to just understand what's out there. What does the education market look like for websites? What does the 3D design look like? What does the, the blockchain design look like? So what's actually really interesting is if we copy the designs that are here for blockchain or for NFTs or for whatever it is, it's completely different to what we see in Dribble. It's absolutely different. So even though Dribble tells us where the market is going, what we see in Lapa Ninja is completely, completely different. And that is because maybe it's it's been tested, people didn't like it, they tried to change the design. I'm not exactly sure. But if we see the Web3 market here, I mean, yeah, it has some tones of the purple and the holograms and all that. But I mean, it's not necessarily, you know, th there's there's different things going on here. It's more typical of a, of a real website rather than this crazy animation and all this. I mean, it's it's a different kind of style. Number three is going to be godly.website. So this is a great website for inspirations on really creative sites. So we have tags on the top of the website here and we can maybe filter by e-commerce, for example, and it, it'll automatically load only e-commerce sites. So that's really cool. And then if we want to, we can click on all and it'll take us to the different types of websites, different styles, font platforms, frameworks, libraries, databases, languages. I mean, it just goes on and on and on, which is super, super cool because if you want to see what a really creative development looks like, well then, okay, what can I do with specifically Java, you know, or what can I do specifically with one database or another, or this library or another, or another framework or another. And so the point is that this is real websites, real examples. When I click on the actual video, it takes us to the real site which again, we see what these features look like using these specific technologies, which is great because it's live. And again, that's super important. So the next two sites are specifically mobile designs. So these guys take screenshots of apps that exist in the real world, and they essentially split it up into different categories. And the same thing goes for Mobbin dot com. And what we can see if we click on any of these apps like Flipboard, for example, we can see that there's a ton, a ton, a ton of screenshots. And of course it's blocked by the payment. But if I go back and I go into booking.com maybe, or if I just simply browse, we can see that there's a ton of different examples. Now these guys have a lot of different apps and you can see some of them here. You can get an idea of how much inspiration you can get off of these real apps that exist in the real world with these two individual sites. The next step is going to be uigarage.net. And it's funny that some of these sites have kind of bad UI themselves, but the fact is that you can search different categories here. So if I say, for example, I want to see what a settings page looks like, it'll automatically load that up. I can sort by necessarily only web. And then I can see that these are different settings pages by maybe Upwork, Pinterest, in Webflow even, there is settings pages in Facebook, and then there's three more pages of that. So these are real examples of specific categories that you can filter by, so you can see exactly what you need. Next up is gonna be siteinspired.com. Now it's funny that these sites kind of have a bit of a shitty design, but with that being said, I have featured some of these sites before, like the Kirschberg portfolio, I featured that in one of my videos. So we can see that this site here is featuring some really cool portfolios, some really cool e-commerce sites, and it's worth a look. Now the next two are the best inspiration sites that I've personally found, and I wanna show them with you guys because I'm really excited about them. So the first one's going to be landbook. Dot com. Now, landbook.com is quite similar to the next one that we're going to see, but landbook.com is essentially a collection of screenshots of real life sites that we can see here. So that's a, that's a real site. And it essentially gives you a ton, a ton, a ton of different industries. And it's similar to Lapa Ninja, but I do feel like they are more curated to more grounded websites. So they're less creative. And for a lot of people, that is what they need. They don't need crazy designs. They don't need designs that are going to revolutionize the world. They only need something that's going to help them and help their clients. Now, this last one is really great as well. Not only can you browse by different categories like we have here, like marketing, technology, freelance, all these different categories and colors as well. That also happens to be something that you can do in Lapa Ninja. I forgot to say that, but you can also filter by mobile. So if you go into mobile, we see what it would look like. If I'm going to click it here, we see that that is what this site looks like on mobile and then on 
desktop. That is what that looks like. So guys, if we do want to have inspiration for websites, that's totally okay. That's what you should be doing. You should be gathering inspiration for your next client, for your next section, for whatever it is, but make sure that you're doing it with real websites. This is a great collection of websites for landing pages, pricing pages, about login, sign up, whatever. These are great examples that have worked that are from real companies and real life designers. So it's not just fake mockups and it's not just random designers that are putting things out there. You know that these are working, you know this pricing page is converting, you know this one's converting, you know this one's converting. And that's the most important thing because if you're gonna get inspiration from somewhere, it better be somewhere that makes absolute sense. If this video helped you guys out a little bit, then please do let me know down below. It's always super, super cool to see that. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.